Hey everybody, welcome to the five most iconic double bass grooves of all time. So I chose these songs partly based on their popularity of just being, again, some of the largest songs in metal music, but also for the fact that these particular songs have really unique drum beats that seem to define the tune. It's not someone just playing a straight roll with a whole bunch of notes in it. These are interesting patterns that are an integral part of these songs and are a huge part of what made them iconic to begin with. And some of these songs, considering when they came out, helped define the art form of double bass playing and drumming as we know it. So let's dive in right now and learn some of these awesome, awesome grooves. All right, so the first song that we are gonna jump into, this is probably an obvious one for most of you, Metallica's One. I don't know about the rest of you, but I mean, it was the first double bass song that I played. I know it was my buddy Dave Atkinson's as well. This is absolutely about as iconic as Double Kick gets. Yeah, you can think about it almost like the double bass equivalent of Stairway to Heaven. Like if you walk into a music store, you know, Definitely somebody in the guitar room is playing Stairway to Heaven, and almost certainly somebody in the drum room is playing one. So let's learn how to do it properly. Let's sort out our hands first, and then we'll talk about where those go. So your hands are just playing simple rock groove. Just one, two, three, four. Big open hands, you got a snare on two and four. Simple, definitely got that part already. Now, for your feet, you're gonna play 16th note triplets between that first hi-hat up until your snare drum. That basically repeats. You can treat this like it's two beats entirely. It's this. It's just that over and over and over and over again. Let's hear what it sounds like put together a little bit first before we try anything with a metronome. All right, so if you haven't actually checked out this tune yet, I don't know where you've been living your whole life, but you should probably go toss that on immediately. This is probably one of the most iconic double bass songs of all time. So there you have it, Metallica's one kicking off this list. Let's get into the next track. So next up, Van Halen's Hot for Teacher, another absolutely iconic double bass track. All right, so for this groove, we've got a double bass shuffle. So that's essentially, we're gonna be playing triplets on the kick, but we're skipping the middle one. So instead of it being one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, we're going one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four, with the kicks. It sounds like this is like a little bit of a gallop. Now, I like to do this with my left foot leading on the beat, but you can do this the other way as well. So that's up to you, but I like leading this one left, feels a little bit more comfortable for me. Now here's the interesting part. On top, we, we basically have rock beat hands, kind of like we had in one, but there's an extra ride cymbal note. Let's pretend that doesn't exist for a second and just hear this with normal hands, and then we'll put the cool ride bell thing up there. So all of those notes are gonna line up with the leg you're leading with. Like I said earlier, for me, that's the left. Now here's the fun thing. When we get onto the ride cymbal, what we're gonna do is for beat one and beat three, so the notes where we're not playing a snare drum, we're gonna play that middle triplet note. So check this out, I'm gonna go real slow. Let's see what this sounds like. Kind of a strange sounding beat, but when you pick up the tempo, it gets ridiculous. It's super driving, and you're probably gonna need to employ some actual doubles technique to effectively play that ride pattern. Anyway, let's hear what this sounds like with the tempo cranked back up. Hot 
for Teacher. What an absolutely iconic double bass song. And honestly, this is the track that pretty much put double bass shuffles on the map. It went from something that was obscure, you maybe rarely if ever heard, to now everybody's talking about it, everybody's doing it. There's piles of songs we've heard since then with double bass shuffles. And this one, at the very least, popularized them, if not started it to begin with. All right, so now on to this next song. We were just talking about Van Halen, iconic 80s rock band. Now let's talk about something a little bit newer. This one may be the most controversial name that's actually on our list here, but this next track is Slipknot's Before I Forget. Now follow me on this. This song has over 200 million views on YouTube, and it's part of what helped rocket this obviously gigantic band into the front light of music. So this is absolutely an iconic beat, and it's super fun to play. It's funky, it's heavy. Let's just get right into it. So the rhythm for this beat, it's actually a four bar phrase, but let's just talk about the first bar. The first bar is gonna have basically this rhythm. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. But we're gonna split that up. So those first four notes are gonna be on the kick. We've got kick, 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 snare. And then we've got hat, snare, kick, kick, snare. This is interesting little syncopation at the end. Let me just show you what this first bar sounds like and then we'll get to the rest of it in a sec. So that bar happens three times in a row. Then on the fourth bar, there's a bit of a tail with these cool shots. So for the shots, we've got three and a four and a. And leading up to that, we have the same first four kicks and just four snare drums that are basically a fill into those shots. Let's hear bar four before we put this together. Now let's see what this whole phrase sounds like. Alright, so that was Slipknot's Before I Forget. Now, Joey Jordison, back in the early 2000s, he was literally one of the most searched for drummers on the internet. This beat, and there's plenty of other ones from Slipknot, are just absolutely iconic as far as what they've done for metal music and the popularity of both that band and Joey himself. Now, we chose this particular one because this beat, it's just, it's, it's so iconic. As soon as you hear that being played, you know exactly what song this is from. The cool offbeat shot the syncopation on the kicks, everything about this is just awesome. And that's why this made our list. All right, so this next song that we are gonna dive into is one of my favorites that I totally grew up with, Pantera's Cowboys From Hell. There's this crazy outro with all this awesome triplet double kick going on. It even switches into 16th notes. So much fun stuff is happening in this beat. So let's break it down right now. <laughs> The first bar of this, we've got basically snare drum is going in quarter notes. We've got our hands doing, well, that upbeat snare feel. Let's see what that just sounds like. <laughs> Nothing to it, but we've got a really cool double bass pattern that we're gonna add to that. Let's go nice and slow and just see what this sounds like. We're just isolating bar one. So it's an interesting syncopation. Let's just loop that for a second. So that bar happens three times in a row and then it changes up in the fourth bar. And in the fourth bar, the bass drum switched down to 16th notes. So you get, it almost feels like it slows down, but it's just this interesting rhythmic switch that they get. Let's just try bar four and then we'll put the whole thing together. Those solid 16th notes are super impactful coming out of that triplet lick. 
Let's hear what the whole four bar phrase sounds like before we put it with a metronome. And now it's here up at the album tempo. So that was Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. Pantera, honestly, one of my absolute favorite metal bands. I grew up listening to that stuff, working on it, playing it. So good. Vinnie Paul is an absolute beast in the best of possible ways. Anyway, let's jump into our last track. This is, again, one of my personal favorites. The Mighty Bleed by Meshuggah. Now this song is super iconic, well firstly because it's just flat out relentless. This is probably one of the most ridiculous bass drum patterns I think I've ever heard, and what's cool is that it evolves throughout the entire like six or seven minute song. It gets from crazy, to completely ridiculous, to just off the rails, and it seriously keeps going. It's almost at a level of nonsense, but the coolest, most precise, amazing nonsense you could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you what I'm talking about. Now we're gonna need to learn how to play the Herta rhythm with our kicks. For this Herta bass drum pattern, let's just talk about this mechanically first. The easiest way to get these started is by playing consistent right, right, left with your kicks. And then once you got that comfy, sticking an additional left between the two rights. Let me just show you what this sounds like. Let's not worry about the rhythmic context of this. Just Right, right, left, right, right, left, and we're gonna to toss a left in between those rights after a few passes. Now it should be noted, your left foot is actually playing evenly spaced notes while this is all going on. Let me try the same thing again, but I'm gonna bridge my left foot over to the hi-hat so you can hear it, especially. So it's a strange sounding pattern, and when it gets even stranger is when we put it together with the hands. Now, this is a pattern that's three notes long. Our hands are gonna play a typical rock beat, and guess what, that means this is gonna line up polyrhythmically. So let me go slowly and put these two pieces together so you can see what it sounds like. And now let's hear it up at the album tempo with the metronome. All right, so that was Meshuggah's Bleed. Probably one of the coolest double bass tracks that I've ever heard. I, remember I literally freaked out when I first heard this thing. I had to run down to my set and learn how to play it immediately. Thankfully for myself, I'd already figured out that hurt a rhythm with my hands, so it was basically just assign that duty to your feet and off to the races with you, but that's not to say it's easy. That song takes a pile of endurance and it's tricky to make it sound really, really clean. If I heard correctly, it took Thomas Hawk himself about six months to even get this thing ready to play it in the studio. So if that's any indication of just how ridiculous this is, yeah, it's straight up nuts. So one little thing, there's definitely an honorable mention that we didn't have here that we maybe should have, but we've got a reason for not. Judas Priest's Painkiller. 
obviously extremely iconic double bass tune, but the part that is so iconic about it is the start, which feels more like an intro slash fill than a groove than anything. So that's the only reason it didn't make our list. It's definitely got an honorable mention. It's easily as iconic as some of the things that we had in this list, but we didn't choose it for the reasons I just said. So on that note, everybody's gonna have a different list for this. This is my top five. What about yours? What did I miss? What were some iconic double bass songs that helped shape your musical path? What are the ones that you love to play? Let us know in the comments. Let's talk about it.